Okay, we can show this. This is where we're going to begin the recap. It's not where we're going to end it. So on the right hand side is our the wheel with a counting beat. And on the left hand side is oh stop that is the wave file playing. And then what we did is we uh, did a voiceover where we were singing like this, but this is what we recorded. So we hum, we blame, we breathe. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing for Change Part 7 Examine in this episode we re-entered reflecting we've been away and back so to speak working with another composer the vocalist whose work we've been transcribing in doing that each of us hears the other's work in terms of our own work there is room in that musical dialogue for each of us expanding our ways of composing moving along We've been of two minds of how to proceed in this series with what we call the darkness meme. Um, and we are working with the new pentatonic scale, which we call HPO2. But what made us uneasy is we know that it should have 120 chords. But the first heptatonic parallel scale, which is uh, this one here, we only had identified 110, so we really wanted to find the missing chords. Find the missing chords for HP01, so we can do it for HP2. And hallelujah, we've done it. We went to our uh, original spreadsheet where we worked these things out, and then we did a bunch of stuff, and we found everything that's in red here not, not orange, in red, are the new chords. And we knew that we had uh, 10 missing chords. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there are 10 missing chords. So we found them, and, they're, and then we put them in the right place. Here, 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 there, 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 there. But we also had left over updating um, this reference sheet in a, in a sort order. So another thing that we did today is that we, in the process of getting all those chords onto the score, we wrote down what is our canonical sort order. So all chords are within the C4 octave. That's the first thing. So if you look at all these chords, everything is between C4 and B4. So even when they were originally voiced and they some of them went all the way up to here, we just dropped those in octave. The second thing is all the minor chords are in spelling order. So C precedes D, D precedes E flat, E flat precedes E, E precedes F. That's spelling order. But the minute you get to the minor chord, major chords, which come next, they, they match the chord that they reflect because every minor chord reflects into a major chord. So once, once the spelling order is determined up here, the mirror or matching order is determined at the same time. So that's what we call canonical. And then we get to the full tonality and then Again, we start across what we now call the upper row, because there's no minor major here. In the upper row, and then when you get halfway through, we just start picking the matching. Well, how do we know what's halfway through? Well, the minute we identify the first chord, we find the mirror reflection. When we identify the second chord, we get the mirror reflection. So again, this bottom row is a mirror reflection of the upper row. We call that mirror matching. So all that has been put successfully into this big long 120 chord canonically sorted C minor major reference sheet. 
So we got that done. Then we uh, we did a bunch of other stuff, like we showed you the wheel and all that. Um, we did experiment with this. We put it into a lyrical form, and we really are interested in future steps and all that. So what we're going to do is just, you know, it's really interesting. We it, I think we've played this for you already, and it's lyrical and it's pretty and all that. And this is our standard way of playing a scale. So we're just going to play parts of it that have the new chords. For example, we discovered this. Those two chords have a nice counterbalance. And then, if you go to the major chords, again, play off the new one. And then, um, these are chords we already had, but these are chords that both the minor and the major scale that's what it should say. Both the minor and the major scale have these chords because they use all the shared notes. So so that's why it was so important to put it in a standard sorting order for all our many, many custom scales. So that was the next thing we did. We updated our master checklist of scales. And the one we just spent a lot of time on showing you is this one here, which is the, we added the missing chords, yay, the adventure of the missing chords, we called it. Uh, 90, might be 90 will fit, I don't know. Yeah, that'll fit. And um, we got a lot of work done on that. And then these are all the other scales that we're working with. This is why we're saying it's so important to have a canonical sort order. So that concludes today's stream. Our ideas for next time are, are uh, we have something we call concordance, which is the master list of chords and that we can sort. And we're, what we're trying to do is uh, a chord database, which we've tried in the past. And we want to do something called interval pair sort, which is going to give us yet another way to pick and cherry pick. You just heard us cherry picking some chords to make a composition. And when you have different s starting sort orders, you get different cherry picking compositions suggest themselves. Uh, we want to keep working with the wheel. We want to add a harmony line. Uh, we do have an animation and to be developed, keep jumping in. So shout outs to Mr. Spatz, Guy Dewar, who stopped by. We appreciate you. Do come back. Do take care. And do keep on streaming. <laughs>